Good morning. It's nice to meet all of you. My name is Kathy Mannon. I have been uh, um, working in the building materials industry for a long, long time. So I'm excited to get to um, chat with you all today. Um, this is an AIA accredited program, so um, we will be getting you your, your uh, certificates of attendance should you need it for the architects on the call. For the, any dealers that may be listening, this is the program that Boral offers where we can uh, support you if you have relationships with architects and you'd like for us to come join you at firms and do this uh, presentation live. We certainly can do that as well. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and get into it for you. So what we're hoping to share with you today um, is ways to discover the benefits of manufactured stone as well as exploring advancements in the manufactured stone veneer industry. Um, we're going to talk about different project applications and how to plan and also some detailing information that's going to be important for you to, to know and also understand the benefits of large dimension stone veneer. So what is manufactured stone veneer? I'm going to use the name manufactured stone veneer and MSV kind of interchangeably. But MSV is lightweight concrete that's made of cement, lightweight aggregates, and mineral oxide pigments. These pigments are the exact same thing that natural stone is colored with. It cannot weigh more than 15 pounds per square foot or be thicker than 2 and 5 eighths inches. As we compare MSV to natural stone, there are a few important considerations to keep in mind. First of all, Manufactured stone veneer typically costs less than natural stone veneer, and we're talking full thickness natural stone veneer. What's great is you don't have to do any structural uh, support additions or anything like around doors or windows, lintels, anything like that. It's faster to install the natural stone. Full bed natural stone, typically a mason can do about 35 square foot a day. With manufactured stone veneer, the typical mason can install about 100 square foot a day, so it truly does. Uh, give you some job site productivity and because manufacturers have formed those molds uh, to shape the stone appropriately there's lower scrap rate and trimming doesn't have to be done on site the way it does with natural stone there's so many different types of manufactured stone available right now everything from very traditional stones to really unique and modern profiles Here's some of the individual stones. This is a look you can get with an individual stone. Let's talk about some of the benefits of working with the individual pieces. You pretty much are limited only by your own imagination with what you can do with natural, or excuse me, with manufactured stone in the individual pieces. They can be installed with various grouting techniques, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. And you can also customize your design by creating unique blends that give the project your own signature look. This is a blend that we see happen quite often. It's our Southern Ledge Stone and the Dress Field Stone blend. Um, this is done by the mason on site, but it truly gives warmth and beauty uh, to create a nice custom look. Another benefit of manufactured stone veneer are the corner pieces that are available. It just adds to the realistic look of the stone by giving it that full bed depth look, and just creating more beauty for your project. Another type of stone that's available are the modular stones. We see these offer their own unique set of benefits as well. Um, with this, you don't have to go back around and grout around each stone. I've been advised by a commercial mason who told me that going back and grouting on large, large projects can actually add up to 20% of the labor cost. So these modular systems do truly offer you a way to keep the costs down on your projects as well. More benefits is because of that fast application. With it weighing about 50% less than natural stone, you can truly just keep going. On tall projects like this, it can be done faster and safer with a manufactured stone veneer. Good manufacturers of, of MSV offer a wide range of accent pieces. We see everything from Trim stones that you can use around arches, electrical boxes, and my favorite is one of is one of the pieces is this um, light switch or a light box. I always feel bad for the electrician that's got to hang that light and make it look nice and straight on that rough stone. 
These pieces add minimal cost to a project and just give a nice polished look. I'd like to touch on the quality in manufacturing. Pretty much this is where the rubber meets the road and the true differentiation between manufacturers becomes apparent. It comes right even down to the packaging. Um, you wanna make sure that your manufacturer is providing materials in boxes that are gonna prevent damage on site, breakage, scuffing, um, makes it convenient to move materials inside. So we have small boxes available as well as, well as large box quantities. There are even manufacturers out there, I'm afraid, that are sending material to job sites on pallets that are wrapped in chicken wire. Don't really know how that um, helps protect the stone in any way. So just make sure you're getting um, packaging as you can write that in it as part of your specification. I'm not sure if anyone has ever seen rusting in stone before, but this is an example of what can go wrong when the man manufacturer doesn't have adequate adequate controls in space. This means that there's iron in there somehow, and if there or other ferrous materials. The solution is require an ASTM, specific ASTMs are out that are available for the quality of the aggregates um, and ingredients in manufactured stone. Air bubbles, now this, you should never see this on a manufactured stone. The reason this happens is that manufacturer doesn't have a good quality control system in place that vibrates that air entrained concrete that manufactured stone is made out of and gets that off the face of the stone. I would suggest take a look at the sample boards that you get from different manufacturers. If that sample board has air bubbles on it, it scares me what the actual material that you'll get on your project will end up with. This actually is a, a couple of photos from a project. I live in the Toledo area. And this was from a project that was specified with cultured stone. And lo and behold, the general contractor had a VE option for it. I'm sure that never happens to anyone else, but this happened to me. And when I got out and looked at this project, because it's about seven miles from my house and I drive by it all the time, the holes that are in this are just out of control. You can actually see the raw material ingredients in there, the aggregates, big holes in here, all these air bubbles. You can kind of see how the stone bows it's got an arch to it that's truly there are manufacturers out there that this is what they produce stone duplication now i'm totally going to call out the mason who put this up um, because these corner pieces are l-shaped and he easily could have flipped that around and no one would have been any of the wiser but if you think about it if a manufacturer doesn't have a very large mold fleet this type of thing can happen Masons are on a roll. They just keep reaching into those boxes, pulling out stones, and they could easily find a duplicate if that manufacturer doesn't have a very large mold fleet. Low quality manufacturers do have this. There's nothing that makes me crazier to see this. It's a sad statement for me, but um, as I'm traveling around um, in my territory, I play a little game when I'm having breakfast at hotels and there's manufactured stone. I will actually, and it's not a a boral product on there, I will actually look and try and find duplicates. It's a sad statement to my life, but it is what it is because I wanted you to know that um, I can speak to the cultured stone line within boral. Uh, country ledge stone has been our number one texture. We have 750 square feet of mold capacity before that stone would repeat. And by the way, we hand paint our stones. You are not going to see duplication from boral. This is how far high quality manufacturing has come. This uh, slide is actually, this is natural stone back here from um, a, a university that, that was their signature look and they were doing continuing work, look, continuing work there. And um, that quarry had dried up and they could no longer get that stone. And they came to us and said, can you help? This is how we came up with a match that they were so thrilled with that actually completely replicates um, the look of natural stone. I share that with you because should you need something unique created, we do offer at Boral the opportunity to do custom blends for large projects. There's some caveats with it. There's some minimum square footages. There's some extended lead times. There's a little bit of an upcharge to it, but know that we want to be your partner. And if you need something unique for a large project, let us know, we'd be delighted to help you. Dan, do we have any questions so far? 
The other one you had uh, during the rusting slide, and I think it's just a recommendation on cleaning manufactured stone veneer. What would you suggest for cleaning? That's going to be covered down um, a little bit later. If I can ask that you just hold that question, I'm pretty sure I'm going to cover that for you, and we'll get you the answers you need. Perfect. Thank you, Kathy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there has been some advancements um, in the industry, which we're all pleased with. Manufactured stone can be applied over continuous insulation. There are many systems available, including some clips and anchors, and it's up to you as the design professional which one you want to use. Some manufacturers even have their own system. Some other advancements in responsible uh, manufacturing include designing towards um, uh, lead and sustainable goals. I actually would like to ask a question. If you all could type your response in and uh, we'll capture this information data but for the or later, but for the um, architects who are on the call right now, how many projects do you have coming up in the future that are seeking sustainable design goals? If you just type that in there, we do um, manufacturing can offer some um, credits toward lead if people are working towards that manner. We can talk about that kind of offline if that's what you would like to do. We'll chat a bit about building codes. So. It is a manufacturer's responsibility to provide a warranty. Typically in the manufactured stone industry, these warranties are 25 or 50 years. It's that manufacturer's responsibility also to prove that they meet building codes and that they have uh, provided proof of code compliance as well. Now what's been strange is there really wasn't a code uh, for manufactured stone veneer. So the former MVMA, Masonry Veneer Manufacturers Association, um, borrowed some things from the siding industry and the stucco industry and the brick industry and developed a set of criteria to raise the bar in the manufacturing of MSV. When a manufacturer goes through this testing that's done by a third party, they are given their own ES report. It's pretty much their grade card. And here's the interesting part. Of about 130 manufacturers or so, who are out there making MSV currently, only about 20% can actually provide this ES report for you. So at a minimum in your specification, you should call for a product produced by a manufacturer who can provide you their own ES report. So what does this testing do for, to get this ES report? Well, here's some basic overview um, components that, that they test. They look at the raw materials, dimension, product performance and test procedures, installation, and quality control. And then we get into some more detailed characteristics. This is really getting uh, um, where the rubber meets the road. The density, the tensile strength, shear bond, absorption, freeze thaw. Why does this matter to you? Well, here's a situation. This is part of the freeze thaw test. So you can see here, they take a manufactured stone and they soak it in a bucket of water for 24 hours. They take it out and they freeze it for 20, thaw it for four, freeze it for 20, thaw it for four. You have to go through 50 of these cycles without losing more than 3% of the volume in weight. So you can see we've got a little situation going on here, actually a big situation. The reason this could happen, maybe that batch was too wet, maybe it was too dry, maybe there was some raw materials um, used in the raw materials that could cause an issue. Whatever it is, using a material that has AC51 is going to help you with confidence for you and your client that you're getting something that's durable, of the highest quality, that's reliable and safe for your customers. Any questions so far? Not in that chapter. Thank you though. Okay. So we're gonna discuss some different applications and what to do for uh, planning the project. So manufactured stone originally was used on interior applications and it still is today because it gives great design flexibility. Manufactured stone products are ideal in kitchens, in wine cellars, in feature walls. It allows you to bring that outside in without any structural changes. We know that um, biophilic design is important now to give you that piece of the natural feeling and this is a great way um, to offer that to your clients. We see it used in residential applications 
quite often it's great for um, adding quality looks to some custom homes because it's a wonderful product that marries well with brick, natural stone, stucco, and siding. The multifamily industry has used it um, for a long time. It's a great product. It, it works well with um, siding and just gives a, a little homey feel to these multifamily projects. If you've got kids playing outside there, you know, they're kicking a soccer ball around or throwing a baseball. This is not a project product that's going to dent or ding, and it just gives beauty and a warmth to the home. We see it used in schools and institutions just to warm up that space, um, gives an inviting feeling to the, to the guests, not only on the exteriors, but also on the interiors. We see it used in libraries and feature walls and entrances as you come into schools, just to give more warmth to those spaces. The medical community uses it often. I am from Toledo and this is an emergency center that we've got several of these that popped up, uh, part of our Mercy Health System here in Toledo. And nobody's ever going to these places for grins and giggles. So the fact that it is a little warmer, a little more inviting, a little calmer is doing their clients a true service. You see it used in the hospitality industry well, uh, as well. Um, it just adds that warmth there. Plus, it's also a great product to use as structures go up multiple stories with that lightweight. It just gives um, beauty to even commercial projects such as this. And we'll see them bring it inside, whether it's on fireplaces, um, on the desk as you check in, on columns. It just adds a lot of beauty. Because of the design flexibility of manufactured stone veneer, these products are frequently used to upgrade the appearance of signage for both commercial and residential products projects. We see the retail industry use it quite often and quite candidly, retail chains have done studies that confirm the theory that stone veneer has been proven to draw in more customers. So you'd be doing your clients a favor if you put manufactured stone on the exterior of that building. Outdoor living has become a multi-billion dollar industry. Here are a couple of examples of manufactured stone being used in these spaces. It just truly is, gives you such a peaceful feel. And as we like more of these conversation spaces to um, congregate to, it just adds beauty to these spaces as well. I've got a question for you. I'd like to take a poll, if we could, if you um, type your comments in. I'd like you to rank these color family Im images by trend, um, with one being the most common that you see for instance if you think um, this is the most common you're seeing if you put three equals one or four equals two that time i'm going to give you a minute if you could just put that in there i just want to make sure that we are giving you the colors um, that we have products to offer for what trends you see happening in the market i'm going to pause for just a minute and give you time to peek at that Okay, I'm going to move on with some more information on planning the project. So, we are a division four product. I'm going to ask you to do a couple things when you're writing your specifications. I want you to include that manufacturer's name, call out the texture and the color. I'd also like you to reach out to either myself or your dealer in the area and get that specific SKU number. There are so many manufacturers out there right now, and I think it might be flattering that they copy some of the names that Boral produces on their colors, but really all it does is add confusion in the market. So let's make sure you're really getting the product you want. Some other considerations to take into as you're planning your project is call out what specific joint type you want. This is what typically we will see people use as a half inch mortar joint, but you can certainly do a tight fit application. There is a wide joint grout, or there is something called an over grout, which is an application done uh, to kind of give an old world feel, which the Masons know the technique to make that happen. Just be sure and call that out. Other considerations to take into um, keep in mind as you're planning your projects with mortar is um what type 
of mortar to use depending on the height of the applications. Um, I'm going to be sending, um, or you'll get with the in the a link in the email that you're going to get for signing up for this, a link to the NCMA guidelines, which are found on the Cultured Stone website. It has mortar recommendations. It has a ton of detailed drawings, but just it just gives you um, a great tool to have. Um, dealers should download this and have, keep a copy of it, the PDF on their computers just to help answer questions as well. We're seeing now in exterior applications um, where it's over 10 foot for commercial that we truly want you to use a modified mortar in this. That bond is so much stronger and it just is the right safe material to use in those projects. Uh, for planning the project, the importance of a mock-up, be sure and call that out um, in your list of considerations. We want to make sure that um, you're getting what you really want the project to look like because there's nothing worse um, than you expecting to have a half-inch mortar join and because the material installs so fast, you go to the job site a day or two later and they've been clicking along and it's a tight fit application. They've done it with a tight fit application. So this gives everybody a reference on the job site of what this, the expectation is um, for your stone. Some other considerations that happen with a mock-up is, um, this is a, actually a, a mock-up from a job out west, and there's a lot of things going on in this slide. We've got manufactured stone being installed. There, This is actually brick. You can see brick back in here. There's stucco. We want to make sure who's going to be on that job site first. Whose job is it to do the flashing? Who's going to take care of any joints where the dissimilar materials don't come together? So that's why it's important to have a mock-up and we can have these conversations happen before you get started. Some other things that we make sure don't happen is we don't want all these little stones put together and we want to make sure there's not these long head joints and we want to make sure that somebody knows how to use a level. So no matter the size of the project, and really um, doing a mock-up is very, very important. Okay, this is another poll for you. Um, how would you rank the following product shapes for manufactured stone? If you just kind of type those in there, even if you just want to put your top three, um, brick, wood, ledge, large format, irregular, or ashlar. If you just say one is one, five is two, three is three, something like that. Just want to make sure that you're being heard and we're giving you what you need. Okay, I'm going to move along. Okay, this is um, one of the drawings that come out of the M N NCMA guidelines. Um, it's we get asked about this a lot as it pertains to um, how far down to grade does our stone need to be and you can see here we've got it four inches above grade now there's ways to take that that down um, further on exterior walls weep screeds and other base flashings should be a minimum of four inches above grade or a minimum of two inches above a paved surface such as driveways patios etc this minimum can be reduced to a half inch if the paved surface is a walking surface supported by the same foundation as supporting the wall. If on an exterior stud wall where the MSB continues down to a concrete or CMU foundation wall and where a foundation flashing is in, incorporated into the wall to foundation transition, at the bottom, you can go down to two inches above clearance from grade or a half inch above that paved surface. If you are doing a, um, a wall situation over exterior grade CMU that's not enclosing a conditioned space like a landscape wall or pillars or columns, you can take that down to two inches from grade and a half inch above the paved surface. If you are doing a landscape situation, we want to make sure that this is backfilled properly and there's some special treatments that happen to that wall as well. It's all called out in the MV and CMA guidelines, which you'll be getting. So some ways that we've seen commercial projects address um, that above grade option is they will actually build in some curbing. 
this is really a good idea. It does a couple things. It pre prevents any damage to that stone from carts or pedestrians, as well as preventing de-icing salts from uh, getting up on that stone. So let's talk a little bit about flashing and moisture management on your projects. We are always trying to help you build better wall systems and the intent is to always keep moisture from shedding out of that wall. So here you can kind of, whoops. Sorry about that. Here you can see, if I can get my mouse to appear, that there's an opening right here. We've got two layers of weather resistant barrier. This is the siding above the stone. And there's a flashing piece right here. This is really important. This is the opportunity for that moisture to shed out of there. Unfortunately, many times we'll see people fill this with caulk and that is certainly not the correct way to handle this transition. We're gonna talk a little bit about some of the other considerations to keep in mind when planning your projects. Uh, people will ask us if it is necessary to, um, to do some protective treatments on your stone. Honestly, it's not necessary, but there may be some instances where you'd want to put some sort of sealer on it. Maybe you're in a high graffiti tag area. Um, maybe it's in an area that's gonna get a lot of smoke on it or something like that. You certainly can do that. It needs to be a breathable siloxane or silane based sealer. Um, and I'm gonna highly encourage you to test that area, um, test an area of stone, maybe on a sample board, put that sealer on it because it's definitely going to change the color of it. Um, and when you put a sealer on it, it does not make that stone waterproof. Do know that sealing stone is not a one and done application. It now makes this part of your maintenance plan and whatever that manufacturer uh, recommends for how often it needs to be redone, you'll have to follow that. Um, their uh, guidelines and put that in your um, maintenance plan for the building. So let's move on to the human side of installing manufactured stone veneer. And that's the installation. I'm gonna really want you to look for the highly qualified installers. It's important to do that. Make sure you see other work that they've done before. If you need help finding installers, your Boral rep can certainly help you do that. We work with um, our local dealer base and ask questions, who's the best masons that they have out there, and we can certainly provide that assistance to you. A few other things to keep in mind in planning your project is cleaning it. Now, people ask us all the time, how do you clean manufactured stone veneer? It is recommended that it's cleaned with a stiff bristled brush and a mild detergent and water, like spick and span or something like that. Inevitably, people will say, can you power wash manufactured stone? And I'm just going to be very real with you. Typically, the person behind the power washer on a job site is the youngest person with the least amount of seniority, and you've just given him a very powerful tool. And if you stand too close and turn the nozzle up on that uh, power washer, you can literally etch the stone and take the surface of that off. So we don't want it to be power washed. Clean it with a stiff bristle, bristled brush and a mild soap and water. Any questions? Sure, hitting those are great tips on cleaning, Kathy. So that was the one question on there. Also, mm -hmm. uh, want to let you know we're getting a lot of great feedback on the color trends and styles. So thanks everyone for uh, your input. Thank you for that. Okay, let's talk about some installation best practices. So for many, many years, the way manufactured stone has been installed over wood or metal frame construction is we have our wood sheathing. We have two layers of a weather resistant barrier, your metal lath, your uh, scratch coat, and then your, your stone is applied here. Now, what's really important, if I want you to remember anything from this presentation, I want you to remember that this scratch coat needs to be, um, a half inch to three quarter inches thick. And then what they what the mason will do, we want that lath completely encapsulated. I don't wanna see it peeking through there at all. And then the, what that mason will do is take the back of their trowel 
and put these horizontal scratches across here. Critical, critical, important step. The reason for that is as that mason back butters that stone and sticks that on there and it dries out, it becomes tongue and groove and it truly enhances the bond on your stone project. Metal lath, a couple things to keep in mind if you're at a job site, metal lath always needs to be installed horizontally. The purpose of the metal lath is to help carry the weight of that stone and manage any movement. So, I mean, I get it why this picture on the right, it was easy if anybody's ever had to handle metal lath. It feels like you're working with a cheese grater on your knuckles, but if there's any racking or movement in this, I'm really hoping that this gentleman or person, excuse me, who installed this, um, hit the studs. If you're installing it in a horizontal fashion, you're able to grab four or five studs across that and help manage that movement. Special information around corners I want you to keep in mind. You should always wrap your corners to the first stud mem member on each side and overlap it by at least two inches. Again, the goal is to manage that movement. I've seen it installed where they will bring one piece of stone this way and another piece of, I'm sorry, a piece of lath this way and another piece this way. And there's an open space that runs right up along the edge of that corner. Unfortunately, we know buildings move. And if that isn't wrapped, that can cause a hairline crack to run right up the edge of that corner. And we don't want that for you. Lath observations are available. Now, this is something that I would love for you to write into your specifications. For your large commercial projects, we will have a member of the Boral Technical Team come out and walk through your projects before any stone gets installed. We're going to look at different transitions be between materials. We're going to do some on-site training. We're going to make sure that scratch coat is applied properly. But if you do that before any stone's installed, it just enhances the quality of your building. A couple considerations to keep in mind in hot and dry weather. It's important for that stone to stay hydrated. So we're gonna suggest that you um, hose down the back of that stone as well as that scratch coated wall. The reason for that is as you back butter that stone and stick it on a hot dry wall, if it's too warm, you will immediately hear something that sounds like Rice Krispies. There's a snap crackle to it. And what is happening is moisture is being sucked out of that back mortar, that back buttered mortar uh, into that wall. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna cause a very brittle bond. And we don't want that for you. So keeping that wall hydrated is very important. In cold weather applications where it gets down below 40 degrees, we highly recommend that you tent and heat that installation. People have tried putting in strange things into their mortar, even antifreeze, and we really don't recommend that. We just want you to tent and heat that application. So as you're ready to put your stone on, I'm gonna ask that you um, use a full half inch to three quarter setting bed of mortar on the back of that stone. I always say it's the way I like my peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. You cover that bad boy from edge to edge with a nice thick coating so that when you push that into your stone, your, onto your scratch coated wall, that you get a nice good squeeze out. So I have a question for you. If anybody notices there's something wrong in this picture, you should never ever be able to see the lath through it in this fashion and there's no scratch coat. So please make sure if you're on a job site that you're seeing those things. But once you put your back butter that stone, so you've got the squeeze out around here, and this is when your uh, mason will go back with his grout bag and grout all those joints. When that's thumbprint dry, they rake it out and it gives a nice uh, smooth looking uh, finished application. So let's talk about installing stone over concrete. You certainly can do this. Um, there's a couple things I want you to keep in mind. Mortar can be applied directly to untreated, unpainted masonry, concrete, or stucco. If there's paint or oil present, you need to clean it, either acid etch it or sandblast it or something like that. Um, if you don't want to have to deal with um, that, you can certainly install metal lath. It's always wise to do it uh, on a, if there's differential movement that can happen. If you've ever seen step cracking in CMU, um, know that if there were stone applied over the top of that and there's no lath, 
that step cracking would come through to the face of the stone. So just know um, you can either you can do it either way. But installing the metal lath will help prevent any step cracking that could happen with um, CMU. Cement boards, you can certainly install manufactured stone over cement boards. Um, you use this, you, if you're using a cement board, you don't have to use lath or scratch coat if, if you so choose. There are some ASTM requirements for this cement board that we want you to have. Um, and also, when you're using a cement board, you definitely need to use a modified mortar as the setting bed of mortar on the back of that stone. Benefits of a rain screen. Uh, this is um, truly helping to build better wall system. It helps give opportunity for both drainage and drying of vapor that may get in that uh, wall system. And we'll talk about this, uh, a specific uh, application a little bit later in the presentation. How are we doing on questions, Dan? We doing okay? Yeah, I think everything's being covered very well. Please keep going. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about large dimension stone. This is truly some nice options where we have uh, for you that gives a true look of Indiana limestone, but it's thinner, it's lighter weight, and it's more cost effective. MSV offers dimensional stones in a variety of colors and sizes, like eight by 16, 12 by 24. They can be installed in a running bond, a stack bond, and with accent courses. What's nice about these pieces is they are within the 15 pounds per square foot and gives you that beauty of a limestone with much easier application and it works great in tall building uh, scenarios as well. With a shortage of skilled labor, large dimension stone veneer provides a solution for quick and easy installation because of the amount of square foot that is covered at one time. So, that's the end of the AIA portion. I've got a couple things that I wanna to talk to you about in a little more detail. So continuous insulation, something I wanna share with you is um, Borel was an industry leader in doing the continuous insulation, uh, finding a solution for this. When you were owned by Owens Corning at one time, you may have had a little heads up that this was coming. What's really important in this uh, application is the screws that you use on it. And we have called out some specific manufacturers um, for the screws that we use, whether you're using it over continuous insulation, wood, um, excuse me, continuous insulation over wood, steel, and masonry and concrete. The testing that we did, I always find this fascinating. So we take the specific screws and we insert them into the stud members and we hung 25 pounds on those. Now what that 25 pounds represented was 15 pounds of manufactured stone, because that's the most it can weigh, and 10 pounds of the stuff, the lath, the scratch coat, et cetera. Those screws could not deflect more than 1 16th of an inch, or it was a fail. So I want you to feel confident, and you're gonna, um, this is on the cultured, uh, the Boro website that you can get as well. Um, but we call out specific, fasteners that we have been tested. So feel confident that we are giving you um, uh, and supporting you with exactly what you need to handle continuous insulation applications. Another product, we talked a little bit about rain screens and we offer one ourselves that's called drain and dry lath. What this is, is this is a, um, a multifaceted product. It is made of, I wish I, I wish I had samples that I could show you. Um, this is a plastic um, product with a fiberglass lath over the top of it, and it actually is dimpled and gives you a um, 3 8 inch drainage plane. It's part of a system where it sits into a weep starter strip at the bottom, and at the top you either ventilate it into a soffit, or there's a, a trim piece, or if you're going up multiple stories, there is a, um, this is almost like a bug mesh here, a bug mesh that will go in between these areas. And we've kind of made it really easy to understand. If you'll notice here, this weave tightens up every six inches. What that means is every six inches into the stud is how you install this. 
So we've done testing on this and walls that normally uh, would take 24 to 48 hours to dry out using the drain and dry lath system have dried out in three to four hours. So our technical uh, team explains it to me that it's a belt and suspenders method to keeping moisture out of your wall system. Great advancement. Some other tools and resources that are available uh, from Boral is we've got some great literature. We've got um, samples that are available. You can talk to your dealers or your, your reps and we'll be happy to get you that information. Our website is chock full of um, information for you as well as uh, we've got some resources for downloading hatch patterns of our stone. I'm a very visual person, so this matters to me where you can really show your client Here's what your drawing will look like with the stone, and here's what it actually looks like in real life. So it just is a great way to bring your projects to life. Specification instructions. Again, this is something that Boral does for you at no charge. Um, what we do is we, you can send me your specification, and I'll have our technical team put an outside set of eyes on it, and just make sure everything's buttoned up tightly, making sure that um, you leave no room for uh, error in all concerns and um, are being addressed properly. So these are some new products that Boral has introduced in the last little bit from the Cultured Stone line. We're seeing designs go to a contemporary feel. Uh, in the last little bit, we've got our ProFit Modera, nice clean lines. Um, all of our ProFit stones are eight inches high with, and they come in lengths of 12, I'm, I'm sorry, eight and four inches high, lengths of eight, 12 and 24 inches. Um, and just gives nice, clean, contemporary looks. This was actually a project done up in the UP of Michigan. I think this is very fascinating as we've got our polished concrete floors, exposed duct work. You can see the nice corner pieces that are available with um, the Modera as well. It just adds a gives a nice um, finished look to those contemporary projects. Cast Fit is available in three different colors. It's our large format, format stone. Um, French gray, carbon, and parchment, eight by 16 and 12 by 24 inch in size. And also hewn stone. And this is a different, uh, a unique product offering from Cultured Stone. What this is, is this is the first time for us, this material uh, comes in three different heights. There's a three inch high piece, a five inch high piece, and an eight inch high piece. And there's different lengths within those heights. Um, they're each boxed separately. So for the first time, you may want to use only one size or you can use all the sizes. It's up to you, but we now have that option. Use just one size or use a blend together. And on our website are patterns for the hewn stone that you can kind of get a look and feel for what the different um, hewn stone options would, would look like together. Another options that we have option we have for you in our contemporary collection is our ProFit Terrain. There's four colors available, um, a nice bright white Arctic and a nice soft gray Ar Arcadia, as well as some with some blends in it. Trek has the, the dark blacks and browns and whites and Ethos has some light, nice soft grays, tone, different tonages in there. Beautiful, beautiful product. We're always trying to stay relevant and bring you um, current design trends. In the last little bit, some of the new colors that we've come up with, in our country ledge stone, um, we've always done multicolored stones very, very well, but we've seen design trends kind of mute down a little bit. So we wanted to make sure we had offerings for you as well um, with some more monochromatic colors in our country ledge stone and also some beautiful new offerings of brick. Um, this actually is a textured cast fit color. It reminds me of storm clouds. It's so pretty, just nice soft gray tonages in there and a lot of variation and cast fit is now available in the carbon. So you'll see that there's um, uh, subtle differences in the colors of the stone. I don't want you to think this is any of these products are ever gonna be like monochromatic, like subway tile. There's intentionally color variation in there. These are the new products that were introduced at the International Builders Show this year. Our handmade brick in the carbon, uh, the hewn stone in the Arctic white, and our sculpted ashlar is now available in our very popular color, Echo Ridge. We know that there are options um, where you might need a value engineered option and you really need to look no further than the Boral family for this. Um, there's a uh, product Dutch quality, which is a great value engineered option uh, rooted in, um, made in Ohio by Amish people with 
a lot of love and skill and craftsmanship in what they do. There are 11 profiles that are available to you with leading colors. It just means that everything that you might need is available from Boral.